a friendly desert community, where the sun is still hot, the moon still beautiful, and mysterious lights still pass overhead while we all pretend to sleep. Welcome to Night Vale. Word is in about a disturbance at the Desert Flower Bowling Alley and Arcade Fun Complex. There has been the sound of chanting and machinery from under the pin retrieval area of Lane 5. And Teddy Williams has changed all the bowlers' names on the electronic scorecards to They Are Here. This is causing some confusion and has completely ruined Jeremy Godfrey's 50th birthday party, which had rented out a few lanes for the afternoon. Jeremy was last seen drinking a light beer out of a plastic cup, shaking his head sadly as he swished the liquid around and looking out the window at the sky, mostly void, partially stars. Teddy Williams was last seen howling, commanding his militia to surround the pen retrieval area and prepare for an attack. And Carlos, sweet Carlos, brave Carlos, was last seen approaching the entrance to the underground city, saying he was going to get to the bottom of this, that someone had to, and that Teddy Williams was deranged. Teddy Williams was then last seen saying, Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Say that to my face, big shot. But Carlos, my poor Carlos, was already gone. I fear, Night Vale. I fear for what we know. I fear for what we don't know. I fear for what we don't yet know that we don't know. The Apache Tracker stood outside of the bowling alley, glowering at the entrance and shaking his head. I remind you that this is the white guy who likes to dress in a cartoonish approximation of a Native American and claims to have mystical powers. He's a real racist jerk and no one likes him and the fact that he recently disappeared and reappeared as an actual Native American changes nothing. And neither does the fact that he can now only speak Russian. He is still the same embarrassment to our town he always was. Anyway, he's glowering at the entrance, arms crossed, wearing one of his stupid plastic feather headdresses. But back to Carlos. Carlos the scientist. Perfect of stature and bearing, perfect of tone and taut, and time having fixed what the barbarous barber Telly so treacherously snipped away. Perfect of hair. One year. One year later. Listeners. Listeners. One single year since two major events in our town's history. First, the opening of our lovely state-of-the-art dog park, which is forbidden and which I will not mention again. Second, and most important, it is one year since the arrival in Night Vale of our most beloved and singular citizen. He came to us to investigate our town, because he said it was scientifically extraordinary and downright 
bizarre. We had no idea what he was talking about, but with his golden voice ringing out from the bell of his mouth, who among us could argue with the content of such perfect speech? Oh, just one short year ago, I had arranged a small ceremony to mark this occasion and invited Carlos to attend. However, it looks like he will be delayed. But I am not worried. I am not upset. I know that Carlos will be here for the ceremony. I have the trophy here in my hand. I am holding the trophy and I am not upset. Carlos will be here. He will. I am holding the trophy. In other news, a commercial airliner appeared today inside the home of surprised Night Vale citizen Becky Canterbury, who said she was about to get in the shower when it roared down her hallway and then disappeared as suddenly as it had arrived. There is no conclusive evidence that this is the same airliner last seen in the Night Vale Elementary Gym one year ago, but we have jumped to that conclusion and will defend it against all naysayers, violently and without mercy. Our truths may or may not be true, but they are ours, and we stand by them, even as the experts and skeptics hold aloft clipboards and intone to us about snow and mountains. Becky added that she would like to take that shower now, and that she has no idea how we managed to arrive for an interview mere seconds after the incident occurred. My doors are locked, she said. My windows, too. I've had my eyes shut for years. How did you get in here? The local chapter of the NRA has begun market testing some possible new slogans. These include Guns Don't Kill People, Blood Loss and Organ Damage Does. Guns Don't Kill People, People Kill Guns. A list of things that kill people. One, conceivably anything. Two, not guns. Guns don't kill people. We are all immortal souls living temporarily in shelters of earth and meat. And, if you say guns kill people one more time, I will shoot you with a gun, and you will, coincidentally, die. To vote on the new slogan, simply fire a gun at the object or person that best represents your choice. Parents, let's talk about safety when taking your children to play out in the scrublands and the sand wastes. All children in Night Vale are missing this week, so there's no current safety issues. Hope we find them. Oh, happy day! I have just received word that Carlos returned from the entrance to the city, gesturing to everyone around and asking them to follow him. He led them into the pin retrieval area, which is not an easy place for a crowd. So there was a lot of crouching and saying, Excuse me, excuse me. But soon enough, they were all arrayed on the clifftop overlooking that dreaded subterranean metropolis. Teddy Williams, 
and his militia, and the folks who had come for Jeremy's birthday party, and Jeremy himself, still holding his plastic cup of beer and leaning morosely against the wall, pointedly refusing to look where everyone else was. This was the first time most of them had seen the city. It seemed so distant below them, its strange spires small and far away. The windows in the buildings, alight with the fire of hostile life, were tiny dots from where they stood. They could hear the footsteps of the approaching army, the chanting. Many of them quaked with fear, but not Carlos. My brave Carlos stepped out into the pit, climbing down the slope. At first, onlookers were horrified at his lunatic descent. Then they were confused, as he got to the city much faster than they expected. And then there was panic, as their eyes told them a story they could not understand, let alone believe. Behold, said Carlos, standing in the center of the underground city. This is not an enormous city miles below the earth. It is a very small city, about ten feet below the earth, populated by tiny people who have had to spend a year slowly climbing the ten feet to our world. He gestured at the spires, which came up approximately to his knees. We have nothing to fear. Well, if Carlos says it, I will happily repeat it. We have nothing to fear and never did. The city council would like to remind you about the tiered heavens and the hierarchy of angels. The reminder is that you still should not know anything about this. The structure of heaven and the angelic organizational chart are still privileged information. Also, angels aren't real. I really get tired of having to say this, a city council representative said to a group of disgruntled angels. Angels aren't real. They just aren't. The angels became unruly and were dispersed by a thunderclap from heaven. Oh, a truly fearful thing has happened, listeners. Carlos, standing triumphantly in the toy-scaled city, was attacked by tiny people using projectiles and explosives. He fell back to the side of the small hole in the pin retrieval area of Lane 5. Blood welled through his shirt, and here I am, stuck in my booth, useless, only able to narrate and not to help. He staggered, fell to his knees, so much blood. He collapsed completely. Curse this town that saw Carlos die. Curse me. Curse it all. Let us take a moment to... 
let us take this moment 